In 1872, the old Idaho penitentiary opened its doors to some of the most desperate criminals in the West. There probably wasn't a whole lot of fanfare involved with that, but there were a few women who went through that Sally Port and not as visitors. The reasons for incarceration range from the horrifying to the touchingly funny, as outlined in a new book called Numbered Inside Idaho's Prison for Women. Kim Fields talked with the co-editor of the book for a fascinating look at part of Idaho's history it's rarely talked about. A 17 foot sandstone wall encircles the women's ward at the old Idaho penitentiary, but even that isn't tall enough to contain the history of the women incarcerated here. Josie Kinsler was one of the first women that were, were housed here, and, and she's one of the reasons that a major controversy that occurred where she became pregnant while incarcerated. At 24, Josie Kinsler was convicted, along with her lover, for killing her husband in Elmore County in 1897. At the time, Idaho was one of only three states without a separate cell block for women. But Kinsler's scandalous claim that a guard impregnated her was reason enough to create separate facilities in 1906. The formal women's ward with seven tiny double occupancy cells and a concrete day room was completed in 1920. If you were to be arrested and convicted, what was it like back then as a female inmate? There was just a lot of unknowns. I mean, all um, you know, correctional facilities were designed for men. The, the, the crimes were really designed with you know women or not women in mind. You know, men were. It was thought men were committing these crimes. Women don't commit crimes. The new book, Numbered, tells the stories of the women who did. Like 29-year-old Lida Southard, who was imprisoned longer than any other female inmate. She served nearly 20 years for poisoning her husband with an arsenic apple pie in 1921. She escaped once using a hacksaw and was on the run for about a year before authorities found her in Kansas. Dubbed Lady Bluebeard, the housewife from Twin Falls was nationally infamous for her antics. Then there was Alta McGee, who served three months for shooting at her estranged husband in a crowd in downtown Boise in 1908. The 36-year-old rented a carriage with a friend and searched downtown Boise for her womanizing husband. She found him in an area that is now City Hall. It was one of Boise's first drive-by shootings. In all, 216 women were numbered and mugshot at the old Idaho penitentiary from 1887 to 1968, when the women's ward shut down over overcrowding issues and health concerns. Some of these women came as single mothers. Obviously, some of them had not adapted well to society. They didn't have jobs. The most common crime for women was forgery. Amber Byerly administers the old Idaho pen and is co-editor of Numbered. The impetus for this was the Idaho Women 100, the celebration of, of women getting the right to vote. And really what we thought here is, well, let's explore what happens when your rights are taken away and um, exploring uh, what it meant for women in, in that time and then how things have changed and how some things haven't progressed. All too often, the female inmates housed here were women without means. Without a man to provide financial support, forgery, robbery, and prostitution were most of their crimes. Helen Hall imprisoned in 1932 for running a house of ill fame in the city of Salmon. Prosecutors thought her orange-colored eyes meant debauchery. Today, poverty and poor education continues to cripple 79% of women in prisons and jails. But unlike the era of the old pen, when six inmates were the most admitted in any one year before the crime wave of the Great Depression, today, per capita, Byerly says Idaho ranks fifth in the nation in females incarcerated. The state's population of female offenders grows at double the rate for men. So when you have an entire system that was created around how you deal with men committing crimes, it, it changed the game and they just didn't know it. There was always this problem with what to do with women. And again, that's some of the things we explore. We really try to dive into the beginnings of what they did, what worked and what didn't. And when you have a, a, a society in which we're, you know, creating the laws around what we would do with men, then how, how can you, um, you know, create a system that works and functions for women? History, Byerly would argue, shouldn't be contained by a 17-foot outer wall. Her book, Unlocking the Past of Idaho Women from All Walks of Life.
That's how history is essential, that we have to go back and, and look at these issues with women and how it affected them then, and then we can understand why we're in the place we are, why some things haven't changed, why some things have, because there's an acknowledgement that, that some things have gotten better, but we've still got a long way to go. That's a good looking book. Well, as Kim mentioned, the Women's Ward was used until 1968 when female incarceration was temporarily moved out of state. State eventually built the Pocatello Women's Correctional Center in 1994 that can house 331 inmates. South Boise Women's Correctional Center can hold 306 inmates. We do have a link to how you can order that book numbered in this story on our website. By the way, the old pen, please now back open for some tours. You want to look into some of that for yourself.